sorry. I, I'm so sorry, ma'am, but we're going to have to ask you to vacate the plane. What? I'm afraid that because you've only booked one seat instead of two, and seeing as you're already a customer of size, we can't permit this for the safety of yourself and your fellow passengers. But you can't just get me off. I mean, how am I meant to get home? We were operating a full flight today, so unfortunately we can't accommodate you. I flew three days ago on this same plane and it wasn't a problem then. It's been three bloody days. I'm and just doing what I've been told. Well, this is ridiculous! I'd appreciate it if you calmed down and disembarked the aircraft. My colleague will escort you back to the check-in desk where you can book two seats for the next flight. I am sorry for any inconvenience caused. This was it. Every fat person's nightmare. I was officially too fat to fly. I didn't check to see if anyone was filming me as I got off the plane. I just stared at the ground as I got off, all sweaty and red-faced, shuffling sideways down the aisle before carefully making my way down the steep, unsteady stairs. As I did, I thought, you know, maybe if I fail now, people might actually feel sorry for me, instead of feeling disgusted or embarrassed. Or then again, they might just laugh. They usually do. Flying has always been a pain for me. Literally, bashing my hips as I walk down the aisle, stuffing myself into a seat that is not built for a body like mine, and just hoping that whoever is sitting beside me is kind. Or at the very least, not a complete arse hole. <laughs> I try to prevent this as best as I can. You know, I, I pay extra for early boarding. I book the window seat so I can push myself against the cold, unforgiving side of the plane. I just, I don't want to be a hassle or an inconvenience. I just want to blend in. Attract as little attention as I can. Maybe, if I push hard enough one day, I'll actually blend into the walls. <laughs> Become reinforced with steam. No, heavy, <laughs> but strong. I was flying home from a funeral. My granny, Patricia's. She lived back in Belfast, and you know, I'd always go and visit her, maybe once or twice a year at least since I moved. She was fat, <laughs> as fat as I am now. She used to work in a bakery, and people used to say that when she wore her cream penny all covered in flour, that she looked like a big round flurry roll. My memories of her are all smells and sounds and tastes that feel like home, like a knife being cut into a fresh, crusty white loaf straight out of the oven, or the sizzle of homemade potato bread as it hits an oily pan with that satisfying snap and squish of a custard slice as you bite into it and you know that thick white icing sticking to your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, with her food, it was joy. It was love. She lived till she was well in her 90s. You know, I'd lived my granddad by nearly 30 years. Now, hey, he was as thin as a wreck and died of a heart attack in his late sixties. And I could just tell that people were looking at my granny with her round belly and her cream cake habit and wondering, God, you know, why wasn't it her? But she lived a good long life. You know, she didn't worry about tomorrow. She lived for the now. Yes, she could say that she had her cake and had it too. <laughs> <laughs> has the guts to do it. You know, like live a full life free of shame. Everyone at the funeral said that I was just like her. And although <laughs> I wish that I was, just couldn't help but think that they were only saying that because I was fat like she was. At the wake, I 
purposely and you know joyfully ate whatever took my fancy cocktail sausages oh sandwiches oh why trail mix you name it i was trying to channel patricia <laughs> <laughs> i think that that's what she would have wanted on the way over i was i was lucky <laughs> I actually managed to blank two seats by myself, and I had my extender with me, which, you know, saved any awkwardness from an overly helpful flight attendant. But this plane, it was, it was packed. And I knew I was screwed when at the gate they were asking people if they wouldn't mind checking in their hand luggage. God, I was doing that thing that I've been doing ever since PE at school. I mean, what every fat person has done since the beginning of time. Scanning the room like the Terminator, desperately trying to find the one person flatter than you. It's like your survival instincts kicking in. Like as long as there's someone else more vulnerable than you in the pack, then you'll be sweet. But no, not another fatty in sight. Just me. I was fucked. Do you know what the only thing that makes flying marginally better is when I travel with my partner? We've been together almost five years now, and I honestly, I don't know where I'd be without her. She gives me the kind of love that I thought I'd never have. A morning cup of tea in bed kind of love. I cut your sandwiches into triangles because she knows that you like them better like that kind of love. <laughs> Gentle and thoughtful and warm. She takes me as I am. You know, she doesn't mind sitting squashed up next to me on the plane. And she'll even speak up if someone's trying to you know, sneak a photo of me or shouts abuse. Because, yes, that still happens to me on a weekly basis. God forbid that a fat person leaves the house, dares to leave the house, and expects not to be harassed. <laughs> but Hannah, she's there to wipe my tears and hold my hand. And make me laugh so hard that I just forget about everything else. But not this time. She's a teacher at a primary school, so she couldn't get the time off last minute, so I was on my own. I left a friend for myself. rigmarole of uh, people avoiding eye contact with you from the moment you step on the plane. You know, the, just the look of doom that I get when I eventually find my seat and my seatmate's eyes just widening as they take all of me in. So me and a couple of middle-aged subby suits shuffle on first. Uh, I took my seat near the front, out the window, got my extender, fastened myself in, then the rest of the plane got on. You know, I didn't even clock who reported me to the snippy flight attendant. I've kind of just learned to block everything else out when I fly. Hurts less that way. And then I was asked to leave the plane. So, that was it. and carefully removed my extender, got my bag from under my seat before carefully and calmly making my way off the plane. I was escorted back to the terminal by a younger flight attendant and as we walked towards the building she muttered something under her breath. toilet 
that I actually allowed myself to drop the guard. I sat there on the cold, hard floor, trying to talk to my partner, explaining what had just happened, and figuring out how the fuck I was going to get home. Witness. Yes. 